Hi, I'm Chef Dennis, and tonight we're here for our community education series, and tonight's broadcast is on video production. So it's something we can all use, uh, especially me, when I'm doing these. And my guest tonight is our Lenny Ferreira, and he's here with us to tip, uh, give us his tips on doing videos and show us what we're doing wrong. And uh, my friend Jenny Field is here too, and she's going to be one of our test uh, kitchens, and they're going to go over some things with her in her kitchen and show her how to set it up. So Lenny, I'm going to turn this over to you, and uh, let's get this party started. All right. Thank you, Chef Dennis. So first off, I'm not going to show you what you're doing wrong. I'm going to show you how you can improve what you're doing now. Uh, and so I'm, I'm particularly going to focus on live aspects. That's really my background in live video production and event production. But these principles are, anything, are principles that you can use in general video production. So most of the time, you know, we're looking down at a laptop. So one of the first things that you can do to drastically improve the user experience is you can grab a box. If I can have my, my the lovely and talented Woodward, aka Vanna White, put this box underneath here. So one of the things you can do is you really just get a box or books or something if you're seated at a table. Then you could just just stack up some books and put your laptop on top of it. That way you can be at eye level with your um, with your camera. And I'm just using a regular camera on a Mac Pro here. So the, the other thing that helps quite a bit is using, there is a plugin called Poonvis, or it basically it moves that film strip on the bottom. It moves it up onto the top. So that way, you're, a lot of times you like to look at who's in the film strip, or so we're not always looking down. It's a lot easier to keep your eyes focused on the actual camera. So it's a lot easier for me to speak to you this way. So let me, uh, I actually do have some slides. How exciting is that going to be? But I want to show you some slides that I put together. They're part of a presentation that I did a while back. Let me change here. Wake this up. Come on, Google. All right, there we go. So we're all dealing with the new Google Plus. Is this looking all right? Can people see what's going on here? Looks good. All right, great. So. I've got a, an iPad hooked up here, and so basically, I want to just go through some quick pointers uh, about you know just some basic things that are really going to drastically improve your your production. So this is just a slide of who I am. I'm a part-time police officer, as you can tell by those glasses. But <laughs> I'm the other half of Shayas. I've been in the video production business for about 20 years. Uh, you know, it's all about making mistakes and learning from those mistakes. Don't typically like to be in the limelight. But I, I, I do love amateur videos, and I, I love the whole spirit behind them. Uh, one of the things that I think it happens a lot is people get discouraged. Uh, but don't let anything get in the way, bog you down, or people just kind of go for it. Um, you know, there are people creating some really exciting and, and fun stuff, and, I, and I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the, the, the live hangouts and what people are doing with that. So. What are the common mistakes that people make? And I'm going to go through each of these, but it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. If you can avoid the top three of these, you're already in good shape. A lot of times you'll find that people just, they'll just stand up against a wall for some, for some strange reason. Uh, or they'll, they'll stand too far away from the camera and they'll want, you know, somehow they'll want their shoes in the shot as well, where you really want to focus on, you know, sort of a head and shoulders type of thing. Standing in the middle of the frame, you know, it depends on what you're doing. For example, in these hangouts, standing in the middle of a frame is fine. If you're watching the news, standing in the middle of the frame is fine. But if you're looking for, you know, something, you know, if you're doing some storytelling, then you might want the cameras, uh, you, you want to be slightly off center. My favorite, my personal favorite is people not paying attention to the background. And so this is where, you know, I think what ends up happening is people will just say, you know, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just sit here, and the camera will go here, and I don't really care. And let me. And so, I, I, I think that the background—it's it's sort of like when you find hair in your food. It doesn't really matter, and it's not a big deal, but it's distracting, and it's probably not going to make for a pleasant experience. So, keeping track of what's going on is really going to help in the long run. The other, and I think actually the most important, is lighting. Uh, and, you know, 90% of it is really lighting. If you're trying to do something with your over the overhead lights or in-house lights, 
uh, it's, it's really not going to help you very much. And what I'm going to do after I go through these quick images is we'll, we'll do a demo here and then we'll, al we'll also go into uh, Ginny's kitchen and, and see how she's done it. So, staging and framing. This is, uh, this is my friend, I'll call him Larry. So here, here's what I'm talking about. Larry, I'm proud of him because he's using a microphone, and, and that's a big step. But, you know, I mean, that hinge in the door is killing me. The lights are killing me. There's a big glare. If he had stood away, if he, it, but he just said, you know, i got to bang out this video, and I think that that door is going to make a great background. And so clearly it's not. So here's where... This was, this, uh, I was lucky to be able to find a shot like this because if any, if any of you watch news or sort of press releases or things of that nature, this is where you have to start thinking outside of the box and not be so literal. So Larry, Larry, Larry the literal wall stander by here, he really, a lot of times people think I need to be in my kitchen to let people know that I'm a chef and I'm working in the kitchen. But that's not really the case. You can kind of step just outside of the kitchen or in this case, what you'll often find if you start paying attention, which you might, is people are standing in the middle of a room or seated in the middle of a room. And what that does is it, it really gives you the opportunity to light scenes. And I'll show you how that's done. So here, here's that same scene. And another technique that I like to use is really breaking your image into quadrants. right? So here you've got a 16 by 9 image with six boxes. And that, I don't even look at the subject anymore. I don't even care who's, on the, who's in the shot. What I'm looking for is what's in the first box, what's in the middle box. A good test is, will each of these boxes stand on their own as an interesting image or a picture? So you're assembling six pictures, essentially. So what's, if you look back at the middle of the room, you can see how far he is from that, from that uh, flag. And what that does is it really gives a nice depth and some really nice distance from that background where they can add some, uh, some lighting. Here is the, the lovely and talented, uh, what's her name again? <laughs> Something Vargas or another. She's very puzzled. But if, again, looking at this image, forgetting about her altogether, you can see that we've got some flowers in the background. We've got some color texture on the right-hand wall. It was part of an interview, and what I want to point out is they're just sitting in the middle of a room, which you've never noticed that, you've never picked up on that until I just told you, but what it does is it really creates a, a nice texture for a background. And so that's what I really want people to do in their kitchens as well. Don't stand next to the microwave or the refrigerator, maybe stand away from it a little bit. Here's our lovely friend uh, Giada, similar shot. So now what I like about this particular shot is... What is she doing on the couch? So again, not so literal. This is you know a casual day at Giada's house. We're just hanging out. It's totally, we're going to make some brunch. I'm having a good time. But there's a nice distance from the background. She's got you know those wonderful pillows. She's got, you know, she's got Giada going on there. She's telling a story. That's right. Thank you, Denise. So this is from that same show. And what I like about the way she's got this, you know, this laid out here, and this is something. If you've got an island like this, we at, in our kitchen don't have the luxury of having a Giada-style kitchen. But what's, what's nice here is if you look at each of those little boxes again, so I'm, I'm going to look at the bottom left, and you've got that nice little placement of that, um, is that parsley or something, or those, the olive oil and all that stuff. The stove fits in nicely. You know, they don't all have to be a picture, but they're kind of contributing and they're not distracting. It's not a light switch. It's not a clock. It's not anything like that. Here's a picture of, of our kitchen. This is uh, Denise. And, you know, again, we're trying to achieve the same thing. The Actually, let me go back here. I want to go back to John. Uh, an important point here. From a lighting point of view, it looks really subtle. And it doesn't look, and that's really the key. The key to lighting is to try to make things as subtle as you possibly can without, you know, uh, letting people know too much. But what one of the main things, do they have a, an enormous softbox right in front of that island? I mean, I, I've seen it. I think it's like six feet by six. It's ridiculously big. And that's what's creating that nice, soft, glowy look on her face and the nice shadows on half of her face, which give that image depth. But, and then I'm sure there are backlights and all kinds of stuff. As a matter of fact, this is actually 
uh, I don't think this is anyone's house. It's probably a set, and there are probably lights going through those back windows. We don't have the luxury, so we work with what we've got. And what I, you know, what I like about this already, I can, you know, I've got, I like the fruits on the, on the lower left. I, I'm not a big fan of that light switch over there on the top left, but I can't really do anything about it. You know, I like pointing out that I, I, we probably should have cleaned the uh, or taken the dishes out of the sink. Um, but you know, it's okay. We're making some videos here. It's 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 all in good fun. We don't have the budgets, uh, and I'll I'll review the lighting here as well. But I just wanted to break that up. Here's another you know piece of video. This is just one light. I'm just sitting next to a window. I probably should have put some stuff in the top left hand corner, um, but. It worked for what it had to uh, had to do. Here's a video of Darren. Uh, from, he's pro blogger, and he was experimenting with cameras. And you know, he's a photographer, so he already understands the concept of framing and things of that nature. And again, he's in the middle. It's okay. I mean, he's doing that sort of relationship type of connection, uh, which is more sort of informational and news based. But he's got a nice bookshelf back there. I think the only thing that's distracting to me is he probably should have open the blinds so that we don't see the reflection of the glasses. Glasses are tough. Those are really hard to contend with. And one of the tricks that you do, I, I can show you, is you just lift the, lift the lights up uh, higher and put them pointing down at a 45 degree angle. I want to go through these really quickly. And so this is uh, the founder of Cliff. This is at, uh, at the Cliff Bar headquarters. What's cool about this location is they've got bikes hanging from the ceiling. But the reason I wanted to point it out to you is He's really sitting in a hallway. You wouldn't have paid attention to that otherwise, but it's like, okay, we'll just sit you here and we'll have a, a long hallway that goes away forever. Uh, and, and these are just some concepts and ideas that I want you to look at or think about when you're in your house and where can you stand that might be a little bit more interesting or compelling when you're telling your story. So far, so good. Any questions, Chef Dennis? Am I going, am I going too fast? <laughs> you're going great. Uh, we don't have anything... On the board yet? So keep Perfect. Going. We're ten minutes in. I don't want. To, I don't want this to go all night. <laughs> I, I have a tendency to be uh, long-winded. So let's talk about some lights. These are your. This is this is your basic light options. On on the on the right with those tungsten lights. This is a light kit that I, that I've got. It's it's sort of if you know if you're serious into production. They're heavy and they're hot. I don't really like to use them. Uh, on the far right, this is a, a light kit that I bought uh, from Amazon that was literally, they, they're, they're nearly giving these away. When I bought them two years ago, they were like $300 for all three of those. And you can buy them now for I think 150 and you can buy one of them for 80 So before that, you know, I was a big fan of the sort of the, the Home Depot cans, but what you find once you start piecing these things together, if you start to try to build these things from scratch is, Next thing you know, you spent 50 to 80 bucks, and you spend a bunch of time, and you don't have a stand, and you don't have all kinds of options like that. So um, these are just things to consider. And, and, and I'm going to focus on using the can and the soft boxes. All right. Uh, this is my last slide before I stop talking and get into the demo. So uh, this is our kitchen. This is where we're at. This is from a higher vantage point. And you can see I've got three soft boxes and where they are. Now, the kitchen. This was this picture was done during the day, and so the you know I've got we've got a back window there that uh, I'll point out to contend with and front windows to contend with. But I just want you to kind of look at the light arrangement. This is sort of a three point light arrangement, and you will go from there. Let me go back here now. Let's go back. Let's hope it all works. There you go. I'm back. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to try to light this scene or light our kitchen. Again, I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to go overboard, but I'm going to bring in the lovely and talented Denise Woodward. She's shocked as if you're surprised. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to kind of set the stage, or I'm going to actually show you principles to look for. So you might not have a light kit, but you have windows. But a lot of times I see people that they'll have the windows behind them, and it'll completely create a silhouette where, I mean, all you have to do is turn and face the window. And you've got, like we saw with, with Darren, you've got a nice soft light lighting you and you're not so concerned about the background. But she's Instagramming. She's totally busy right now. Come on, get over here. 
So, so far so good, everyone? Where are we at? I think I'm, I'm nervous, so I'm, I'm down to 15 minutes. So here we go. Here, here's good. Good. So, the guinea pig. She is the guinea pig. So, uh, these are those, these are the lights I was talking about. So these are, they're, you can get this light now for $80, maybe less now. They're, they're really giving them away. They're daylight corrected. Uh, there are five bulbs in there. And you can get three for 150 now. The only problem with them is where do you store them? Uh, it, they're kind of hard to pack away. So we, we do have three of them. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you how I like to light someone. Why don't you stand over here, Denise? And the other challenge is <laughs> definitely this camera. Uh, the cha recent change, I'm not going to make excuses. <laughs> anyway, so let's come over here. So one of the things you want to look for when you're lighting a subject, so I've just got one light here, but the, the concept of the three-point light kit, right, is you've got what we're using here right now, which is the key light, where it's going to illuminate this side of her face. And then you've got a backlight, which is going to create a uh, uh, basically a sharp line here. And once you actually are aware of that line, anything you watch on television, any show, you'll start to notice there's, there's going to be a lit line around a subject. And then there will be other light, you know, background lights, which, you know, I didn't go too crazy, but we can play around with other lights here and, and basically try to light the scene. So here we have the key light, which we already know is working. Let me go ahead and play with that. So I'm going to actually turn it off. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to see anyone, right? So we, we like where that key light was, nice and dark. Now I want to turn it on. There you go. Well, you typically wouldn't have the light in your shop. You no. typically okay. wouldn't, yeah. Well, we'll move that around later, but we're just kind of getting an idea. So what this light is, is doing, see it's kind of illuminating her hair? And are we getting the, the little, the, the sharper line here? Not so much, it's a bit, let me put some more light on. Don't want to go too crazy. So there's one, right? And then, you know, you know what the actual problem is? The bigger problem is this camera, where it's got the auto iris. <laughs> and so it's compensating, and it's trying to light the entire scene. So I'll show you. I have some, some pictures of if you have you know, a DSLR or some other camera where you have full control. Uh, it, I mean, it's amazing. The whole house is <laughs> the kitchen is completely lit up. So let me go ahead and... Uh, but this gives you an idea of where to place It just lights. gives you an idea. So here we've got the key light back on. And I can kind of play with this and try to get some shadows. So in order to get depth, over here. if you put your light at a 45 degree angle coming down, if you have glasses, it'll, it'll remove the glare of the whole box in your glasses but it'll add a nice little specular little highlight that, you know, it'll be like a little twinkle in your eye. Twinkle in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, finish. Sing it for us, I'm lady. Really, Go ahead. I'm really flying through this. I just got to relax. I, I know. know what the big deal is. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to point out, and unfortunately you can't really see it too much with this particular camera, is I'm looking at... The light here, the, the line here, which you can't see so much, but it's there. I'm looking at her hair being lit. I'm looking at half of her face having a, a bit of a shadow, and that's going to create some depth. So it, it makes it a little bit more 3D-ish, as opposed to, if, and I'll go back to our friend Larry. If you look at Larry, he was completely flat because it was light from all angles. And sometimes what I'll do is... Maybe add another light. I mean, hang in there. What do you call this light? What do I call this light? This is just a fill light, right? So 
It might be, sometimes it might be too dramatic or too dark on the other side. Right, so now, I mean, because this, the, the lens just, ba the camera just basically said, open it all up. And you can see as I come in and out, it changes the lighting. And that's the camera's compensating. So look, so I actually like this one off. Yeah, thank you. But these are the basic principles of lighting. I mean, this could be a window. And you can just, you know, you, you, the, the hard part might be the, the, the sort of the backlight. Well, your key light would be the window. Yes, the yeah. key light. The key light this way would be would act as a window, and that's kind of the shot where I was standing by a window with those microphones. There was no artificial light. That was me just standing by a window at an angle. Um, and so, I'm liking the way this lighting is looking, but I don't actually like the way that we're framed. And we, we you can actually see, and I wanted you to see, uh, it's it's uh, daylight saving. So. Unlike, video, unlike photography, where you want natural light, when you're in productions like this, you really don't want natural light because you can't control it, and you have a short window to which you can shoot. But So you might be shooting a specific scene. The breakfast scene might take you all day, and you can't be at the mercy of, of lighting, or rather of natural light. So I've actually blacked out as much as I can. So. I'm not crazy about the actual framing, so I'm going to go ahead and just move these this box. And this is how we normally do it. Unfortunately, my camera isn't working with the Google Plus upgrade. So what I'll do is, you know, so now go ahead and, so if you can, Denise, go ahead and stand where we normally stand. So what I'll try to do is, I'll try to sort of get rid of those windows and, that, and the black. Usually there's a curtain there, but... Uh, I left it out just to show that. And so what I'll do is I'll put this, I'll usually have the camera at an angle like this or something, right? The other thing that we have to contend with is that microwave. Sometimes we get a lot of reflection there, but it's okay. You can't have it all. So here we have a, a, a typical framing for how we'll shoot something. So like I said, we don't have the luxury of an island that, you know, with the kitchen in the background. So what we'll do is... You know, we just kind of try to do it uh, with with uh, with things there. What do you call that? We don't have an island; we have a peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but this is the other key too, right? I mean, so sort of, this is the framing part. What's in my shot? So I might want that KitchenAid in my shot, but see how I've gone too far, and now I've got that corner with the with the plug. So we'll move that plug. We'll put the KitchenAid in there and do some some better framing there. Maybe there are sponsors. I definitely would get rid of that rag hanging from the uh, hanging from the. Yep, yeah, there you go. Anything else? How else? Everything else dirty? <laughs> the iPad's got to go. You get the idea, right? Set a stage. Get rid of things that don't seem to be adding value. Uh, clean it up a little bit. Maybe turn on those uh, the the underlights. Yeah, you know, I, I've actually here. So let me put this back here. Uh, I don't. I can't. We don't have a lot of flexibility with these lights. So what I've done in the past was, I've taken gels. Here's you know here's a blue gel that might give it some some color, and you just tape them underneath. Color is kind of nice. It adds it adds a little bit of texture. It's, still, it's too bright. We'll never know with that, with the you know because of, because of this particular camera, but. Already, you can see this doesn't actually look that bad. How does that look? How does that look? Looks good. Yeah. So that's quite a bit of a difference. And what have I done? Well, let me turn this light off. And oh. if you only have one softbox, so now we've only got one softbox, and even that looks okay. eons better. So let's turn turn off all of these lights, and now I'm going to turn on the house lights. <laughs> So this, <laughs> so the, the uh, this camera again is really compensating quite a bit. It doesn't look horrendous, but it's, it, has yeah, it doesn't look all that bad. <laughs> but it looks yellow. There's no control. You're not. I'll, I'll show you an example. You're not. All, you're not going to shoot with this camera, and I'll show you an example with another camera 
of exactly how bad it looks. And, and I think we've all been there when you know you shoot something, your expectations really high, and then it just doesn't look like what you expected it to look. And that really has all to do with your lighting. Um, and personally, I think these. I don't like this light. Yeah, then it's a little bit dark, but that's okay because we're focused on the subject. I, I don't actually like it. I prefer to use these lights. Are you going to show this one, please? Yeah. So here we just have that uh, that key light, and what uh, one of the things that you can do. I was a big. I was a fan of the cans. You, And the cans are nice, uh, but sometimes I find that they just have, they give off a lot of light that's not really controllable. So for example, let me actually turn this light off. Right, so we've got this big light that is totally bright and it's washing everything out. What I can do is I can take <laughs> Landed. What you can do is you can put these gels, and you have you know you're saying uh, let me see here. I can't see what you're doing. You can, I'll do it. Yeah. So what I've done was I've taken. Can you see that? Yep. Whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> I've I've basically got some clothespins, some gels, and some filters, and I have tried to control the light a little bit. And what you can do with this one, so if you, if you only have one softbox, what you can do with this is you can just clip it to the cabinet. And I'm going to use it as my backlight. Yeah, but then this is a big challenge. So let me get that out of the way. Romantic. Yes, how romantic is that? That's one, it's very romantical. So here we've got the backlight. It's still a little hot. But if you put that, you know, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, I think the, it's, you know, the daylight corrected bulbs are really a lot nicer than the, than the house lights. I mean, that camera was very forgiving by design, but you're not going to shoot anything with that. So let me cut back. And any questions? No, we're good. Keep uh, keep up. I am I am done with you. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to come back here. So let me just change over really quickly, and I'll show you with a proper camera. Uh, wake up. Come on. Here we go. So here is this. This was uh, shot with the with the five D. A Canon 5D Mark II, and here we have, you can really see the, the, the backlighting where we've got that white edging, and her hair is nicely lit there. Turn that off and arrange my key light, and, and then now we've got all three of them on. We, I've got a fill, and I've got those. I think that the, the, under, the cabinet lights are too strong, but they kind of light up the, the, um, the countertop. Which, which I think, and I think you'll agree, looks drastically better than this. Is the same shot, no lights, just the house lights. So you go from this nasty orange to something that's you know a little bit more decent and crafted. And I believe that's it there. Yeah, let me come back here. Now, if we can. Go over to uh, and, and so no questions. I I just have a question, Lenny. Uh, you're using your Canon 5D to shoot the video with? Uh, no, no. So this the Canon 5D is what we use. 5D and a 7D is what we use to shoot stills, editorial pieces, or stills as well. Uh, but just sort of story, you know, for storytelling or from promotional videos or. For work, we'll do customer testimonials. So those are those are cameras that you'll use for production. You can't use them. You can't use the older models as a 
live camera, so you can't plug those cameras into your computer and get a live video signal out of them. At least you couldn't. Now, what we use for a live production such as this is a camcorder or just sort of, you know, any other traditional video camera. And what those give you are audio options, zooming options, and they uh, are on all the time. And they'll send out a full-time HD signal that you can then bring into your computer, kind of like what this camera is doing. What the 5D or the 7D will do is they shut down after 12 minutes. The Mark the the 5D Mark III goes for 30 minutes. Um, some the, I think the 60D will give you sort of an HDMI full-time output. The newer cameras are doing that now, but the originals did not. And they're not really live. They're they're really for storytelling. Those cameras. They're not really for live event production. Two different. They're completely different animals. It's kind of like a pastry chef and a and a an, uh, regular chef. Similar, but not the same. Is that a good analogy? Does that work? Yeah. So so in other words, when you would shoot a video, though, just a regular old video camera would be fine. Uh, this is the yeah exactly. This is where your camcorder actually is still very useful. Could you use that for hangouts on air like this? Not easily. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can't. You uh, I, and so not easily, and not since the change today. So gotcha. typically, I actually have a camcorder going, uh, which is a lot more controllable and easy to manage. But uh, that stopped working today, and I usually have a microphone too, which I'm a stickler for, and that stopped working as well. So. Miss Jenny, I, uh, we have we have uh, Jenny on on the uh, hangout because I think that she's done a great job with what she's done in her kitchen and how she sort of um, transformed it from you know what it might look like now, which I think it looks great as it is. But but she is, <laughs> but she's done a great job with her hangouts with lighting and just sort of making sure that her framing is right. So if you want to just you know show us what you're what you've done or how you've kind of set up your your shots, that'd be great. Not. I can't hear her. Jenny, you're muted. Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn to? Well, while we're waiting for Jenny, we did have a question. Madeline Moy asked, how do you approach lighting in a very small space? <laughs> Not with these big soft boxes. Uh, uh, how do you, what would be a small space? Like... Well, here's what you do. So let's say you have these kidneys. The, the nice thing about them is you can, you can see them now. Uh, the nice thing is you can hang them from the top of your cabinets. The key is to get them out of the room. Don't use bulbs that are crazy uh, hot or with really high water. This one is 120. You'll have probably more success with a light at 60. You have to play around with it and, and decide where you want where you want to put it. So this this would make a really backlight. Um, the problem is it's got this huge flare. How do you control that? There's something called cinema foil, which is essentially aluminum foil, but it's it's rated for high temperatures. So what you can do is, I mean, a 60-watt bulb is not high temperature, but a lot of times these lights are 1,000, 2,000 uh, uh, watts, and so things get really, really hot. And what you can do is, I'll turn this on, and so you can just fold it down so that you can start to sculpt and shape the light. So a couple of these, some aluminum foil for your 60 watt bulb, and uh, that will help you sort of control things. But keep in mind, it's those three principles. You want your key light coming at you at about 45 degree angle. You want a backlight to separate you from the background. And if you have a bunch of lights, then you can kind of light your background in ways that it also can further separates you. OK. Sounds good. All right, Jenny. Okay. Am I back? You're back. Sweet. Okay. So, um, 
when I first started doing this, I owned nothing. The only thing I purchased um, before I did my first Hangout on Air was one camera and this little microphone that cost $17.17. .17. I was like, you know what, I am not going to spend any more money before I know that this is something that I'm going to be doing a lot. So I just brought in all these lamps and I've got a couple of these clamp lights which I think are like six bucks or something like that. So um, I guess what I'll do is just show you how I run around the kitchen and get the room ready. First of all, I'm like way farther away. I zoom in generally, so I'm going to go ahead and do that because that sort of makes you focus more on what I want you to see. You Let go. me get rid of the lower thirds jobby so you can also see the um, countertop a little bit more. Um, and generally I have the computer so you can't really see that either. But um, So I think what I'll do is take off this microphone and use the microphone that's just on the external camera and sort of wander around and just get the room ready. Does that sound reasonable? Yep. Okay, and hopefully you'll be able to hear me and I'll just tell you what I'm So, am I still on? Yeah. So, what's, yeah, uh, what's nice about having a camera, a U, well, in, in that case, you guys are using the USB camera. And what's nice about having those small cameras on a tripod is, you know, again, this, this, wasn't, this was supposed to be working. <laughs> but you have it on a tripod, you can then put it further away and maybe stand in parts of your kitchen that you otherwise wouldn't think to. Again, kind of in a framing point of view. But so, with, you know, and, and she's got the luxury of having that island or that sort of countertop that is directly in front of the sink or some additional workspace, which, which is pretty helpful. The only issue is I do have the window behind me, so sometimes it can be distracting like I'm doing it during the day. But I do try and do the whole three-point lighting principle with what I have. So key light, fill light, and backlight. The backlight is played by this guy. And then I'm just going to, I literally have lamps that I have grabbed from the living room. They're not color corrected or anything, um, but we'll just see the difference it makes just to turn on these lights. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is a sad little fluorescent bulb. It takes a while to actually crank up. So I've got that one on. And now I'm going to have to um, wander over to the other side without knocking anything over. So, you might want to, you know, so as far as the countertop's concerned, you know, you maybe want to get rid of those dishes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I learned all these things from you, Lenny. <laughs> I used to think that it was absolutely fine that my kitchen looked awesome. And you know, um it did. Now it, it, I realized I must put I don't it actually away. like it. You know, sometimes I'll just see Doritos chips on top of a refrigerator. Uh, it's but you know, these are just so little things. What I what I do, I have a corner of the kitchen that you cannot see, so I just take all of these items. You can leave them there now. I'm gonna, okay, we'll leave them so I don't make a horrible mess. And then this guy, I'm gonna take my step stool and use it as my um, backlight. I don't normally have a step stool in the kitchen. That's a nice one. It's totally handy. <laughs> it doesn't look very good in the shot though, does it? You know, it's so hard. Like you'll shoot something, and you know, we I've shot stuff, and I, I've forgotten that the trash bin was over uh, by the floor. You just kind of, you can't stay on top of all of it, but you just have to try. Right, and honestly, it wasn't even on my radar until you said something. So I am much more mindful of these sorts of things now. Okay, so this light, hopefully, it's out of the frame at this point. And then now I'm like super aware of light switches because it's all Lenny's fault. So I just take something reasonably decorative that ought to live in a kitchen and just cover the light switch like that. Um, how's it looking so far? Yeah, it looks good. Um, I normally have the pendant lights on. I'm going to like climb over the countertop very elegantly and turn on the overhead. Just because I need that light if I'm working here, and I don't have like color corrected lights, I just have yep. these halogen jobbies. Yep. And then this guy, I use. He's kind of bright. I think he's only 60 watts, but he's um kind of bright, and I use him 
back here behind the um, black hole of the um, toaster oven. So I just plug him in. He has two layers of paper towel kind of muting that light a little bit. Yeah, and that's definitely where you want to be be somewhat careful. I mean, these these you know forty watt, sixty watt, even hundred watt bulb is not going to generate a lot of heat, so you can get away with the paper. But that looks actually perfect, right? So you can see the, there's a huge difference with that corner and how it's nicely lit, and the the uh, the backlight that you have at the top it's just blaring out light, and so that's something that maybe you can use. I mean, don't you don't need to go get um, cinema foil, but aluminum foil, you get some clothes pins and you kind of mm. hone it in and close it down a little bit so that it's just not blasting light out all over the place. Right. And that way you could just focus it specifically on your shoulders and on your hair. So I still feel like I'm a little far away. I normally feel like for these things I'm um, closer. Yeah, maybe turn it a little bit so I you I know, my head's cut off. But anyway, um, this is basically what I do, and then I normally have time before we start something to play with the angle and make sure, like if I'm going to do something on the stove, I want to make sure that you can actually see part of the stove, so when I move from one camera to the next, it makes sense, you know, that, oh, she's going here now, and then not have the camera, usually set up on like a cereal box or something very expensive like that right here, Try, um, you know, focused on whatever I'm cooking. Light looks great, Jenny. And, and this is nothing special. Seriously, there's not like any kind of special bulbs or anything. It's just what has what just lives in our house. And sure. some of them are bluer lights, and some of them are warmer lights, and it just seems to work. So turn that light off. Turn that light off that you put in the corner. This this one? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, I, I think to me it kind of, I mean, these things are all really subtle, but to me it makes a big difference because now, now you've got this black hole that's kind of drawing your eyes towards the, you know, the toaster. But when you kind of light it all up nice and evenly, uh, it, it, it's not as distracting. Again, you know, these are all small things, and I think to, you really want to not focus on overwhelming yourself, right, because this is yet another skill and another task. Right. But these are the little things that can go a long way. Again, forget the lights, just don't stand next to the wall. Uh, right. That would be your first, your first thing. You know, lift the you know, camera up to eye level, that's another thing. Those are simple. Create some depth between yourself and the background. Um, you know, and then if you want to go crazy and have a bunch of lights, uh, you know, you're, normally we have a lot more gear here, but thanks to the, the upgrade, uh, we've got, I've got a lot less. But the key is to actually do something and not let the process bog you down. Right. And what happened with me, the first time I did it, I just brought in the lights, and the second time I refined it a little bit. I talked to Lenny, he's like, you know, what about that light switch? And so now I sort of have this checklist in my head that I go through to make sure okay, my light switch is taken care of. Is the light in the shot, or can you not see? I mean, make sure that it's framed reasonably. Put away the dishes. Like there's a, there's a couple of sponges back there that are bugging me because I know they're bugging Lenny. And yeah, they, I was just going to bring that up actually. I was going to tease you. <laughs> this, in, the, in the drain, you got it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I it was overwhelming to begin with. But if you guys have not done these hangouts before, honestly, there's plenty of people who can help you with all aspects of it, and none of it is. I mean, if you forget one thing, it's not like you're not going to have a successful hangout. So my advice is just go for it. Just try it. You're better off just jumping in and learning the hard way sometimes, and you'll be much better for it. Exactly. Well, I mean, we were talking about it earlier, and like I said in sort of one of the earlier slides, it's all about making mistakes, and you're going to make endless mistakes, endless. And, you, you know, the checklist is always going to get bigger, uh, but you're still going to make mistakes, and it's okay. Don't let them, you know, don't let them slow you down or get you, you know. Everyone is. Everyone makes mistakes, and I think and everyone is really supportive. So, uh, you know, feel free. I love doing this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm more of a behind-the-scenes guy, so uh, doing, doing this, I was, you know, definitely a little nervous and maybe going a little bit too fast, but feel free to hit me up anytime. I mean, ask Jenny. I'll, I'll, 
I, I'll do this all day long. I mean, I do. It's, I do it for a living. Lenny, we had a question about using two cameras. How would you set that up? Not this way. <laughs> so, uh, so how would you be, how would we set that up? And I've done this in the past. So, the, so the issue with Hangouts is people are. I will. I would say people in the food community. I, I don't really see too many others, but people in the food community are really, I think, pushing the envelope. In that, I was shocked that you guys had two USB cameras and you're switching at, at, by going to the settings thing and I mean I, I've got it here and that's how I got my iPad in. You need some switching software or hardware. Now I, I, I've done it with hardware where you hook up two cameras into a little switcher and you just go back and forth or you know you get three or four or five cameras. But it's big, that's a whole other level of production that I'd be psyched to get into. Uh, but, but I'm sure a lot of people will just not be interested. But, but we, if, if that's, a, if that's a, I, I would love to do that to answer your question, how to put another camera into this, how to switch cameras, how to just really go nuts. Uh, and that could be the next, uh, the next incarnation of, these, of this uh, talk. Lenny, we've, uh, that's something that we've asked for a long, long time as some kind of a switcher that wasn't going to cost a fortune. Because uh, yeah. the software that's available now really doesn't seem to work real, real well, or is, or all the time. And every switching box that we found has has been just way too expensive. Yeah. So we need something. We need need something designed to make it easier, or something made like a switching box that isn't going to cost too much. So, yeah. so, so there is a product called Wirecast by a company called Telestream. And Wirecast makes a really cool uh, switch, a piece of switching software. Now it's 500 bucks. So right there, it's 500 bucks to get in there. Um, I have it because I use it for a living. Uh, it works great. I do a lot of live, you know, CEO events with it. Uh, there are there are other boxes that are even more money, but I, I'm finding that Wirecast is working quite well. The issue is. Google Plus is not really designed. They, they don't have that in mind. They just have low common denominator. How do I get a webcam to work easy and fast? I'm sure the majority of people who do Hangouts aren't even familiar with that gear, that, uh, that settings gear. Um, <laughs> You're that's, right that, about that. Yeah. that. That's really it. So like I said, I was kind of psyched. I was like, I can't believe these folks are switching USB cameras like this. Why well, use two? Wirecast, Wirecast will do it, mm -hmm. but the, it crashes. And I wanted to do it today, but I mean, hours into it, and I still couldn't get it going. Well, I think it depends on what type of event you're doing. I mean, when I when I teach my classes, I only use one computer, and those people don't mind me switching back and forth or reaching over and doing the gearbox and coming in. But when I do other ones, I'll just hook up two computers and use two of the Hangout slots. And, and uh, Madeline Moy just asked, can't you just use two of your windows for that? So I have two different computers running two different cameras and then two different angles on it. Well, think about how much that solution costs. That's, yeah. that's, that's two to four grand right there. Well, not not nowadays with computers, no. Yeah, sure, right. But if you've got two MacBooks, there's four thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we buy PCs. They're three hundred yeah. bucks, four hundred bucks. Okay. <laughs> get, get yourself a bunch of netbooks, and you know, for three hundred dollars, and there's your studio. <laughs> but I mean, I have two just because one will crash. Anything that can happen will happen. So yeah. I I have two set up. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I like amateur. I, I prefer this. I think there's a there's a connection that you can make with people with this quality of, of production that you don't make with the really highly polished stuff. I mean that there's that stuff is great and you know it's fine, but I, this is raw and I, I I much prefer raw type of productions. Uh, but you know pushing I like you know I like pushing it as much as I can. Uh, and, and like I said, Dennis, I mean if there's a round two of this thing where people really want to get mm -hmm. get down and dirty and try to make things work, I, I'd love to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. We will we will be doing more. Possibly, uh, we had talked about our um, virtual conference will be coming up in July. I haven't announced that yet, but uh, very likely we'll be able to do something for that. So I think you just did. <laughs> I know I just did. <laughs> the examples of the slides of the I I already did. I already did. Yeah. She was just uh, Denise was asking me if I was going to show the examples of the three point lighting 
with a, a much more controllable camera. So just you know, three. Ask yourself this question: Where is the light, and where am I in proportion to that light, or you know, in relation to that light? Is it behind me? Is it over my head? I mean, you know, if you can stand by a window at this angle, uh, then you'll probably light yourself pretty well. I guess completely overhead lighting is not a good source, is it? If that's your only source. And, and let, if you want to be in the witness protection program and kind of yeah. create those crazy shadows up above right. you. Or, you know, if underneath it, you know, so a lot of times you'll have someone at a podium, you know, at, at a conference, and then the lighting somehow is either only above them, so they've got crazy dark eyes all over mm -hmm. <laughs> Raccoon eyes. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Oh, anyway. Well, that's great. That's You've given us a lot of information in a short period of time, and Jenny has showed us how it works and how your uh, your tips have helped her a lot. And I know her videos have come a long way. You know, I remember when we first started this thing back in December, it was that we were just all kind of crazed. <laughs> but we but the only way to really learn is to go in and try it and, and to make the mistakes and just to correct them as you go. And yeah. now we have people like you that are able to help us and point us in a better direction. No, thank you. You know, I love to go back and look at my old stuff and see how terrible it was. And you know, that that, that might be last week. <laughs> hey, well, we're always improving. That's the important thing. Yeah. That's it. So, uh, actually, I, I don't have any other questions up here. If you have anything else you'd like to cover, uh, I think we're, I'm do good. we're doing good. I mean, uh, it was a great uh, Jenny. Anything you want to add in, or? Um, I don't think so. That pretty much covers it. Um. I just again want to encourage people to use what you have before you go out and spend a bunch of money because you know hangouts on air are wonderful. It's a great way to reach your audience and to get your word out there. But it's also maybe not for everyone necessarily. So I would advise maybe not go in whole hog. Use your lights that you have in your house. See how it goes, but don't not try it. Right. I mean, we've had people do them even with just the, the uh, cameras on their laptops. And granted, it may not be the best way to do it, but if that's what you want to do to give it a try, I mean, you know, I would suggest doing that rather than not doing it all and then seeing how it comes out and then going back and, and deciding whether you want to get a camera. And they aren't that expensive. And, you know, and getting a webcam, if you're going to get a webcam, I mean, the difference in price, if you go for something that might be 40 or $60 dollars, to seventy-five or eighty dollars, there is a drastic difference in the quality. So, I mean, bite the bullet on that extra forty dollars and just get the one that's eighty. And we're using uh, Logitech nine uh, twenties or nine tens. I don't think you can get nine tens very much anymore, but the nine twenties an excellent, an excellent camera. And if you're using Apple, you just need a little piece of uh, software you get from the Apple Store to make it work. So. I think uh, I think your camera looks great. I mean, you know, granted you're kind of static, but I mean we're all kind of static at this point. But you're, the the resolution that you've got, and and even the way you're lit, you know, you've got just some, that eco light off to the side. But you know, like I said, you've you've got the shadows on one side of your face that kind of add some depth, and it, I think it looks great. Thank you. Yeah, I mean they really do a nice job. It's it's amazing. Uh, you know, like I said, and you can get them on Amazon. Sometimes they're on sale for seventy two dollars. Uh, right. Uh, it's really not a bad investment if you're going to do these, and I think you should. Um, we're going to be doing some other uh, events on just videos too, because you know YouTube videos is a great way to bring more people to your blog. If you're a food blogger or any kind of a blogger, uh, you know just having those videos on your on your blog will draw more and more people in. So, you know, it's something that I think is the next wave of where we're going to go with with our craft. So, uh, you know, this is something you might want to get into and think about. No, you're blazing the trail. So, I'd like to see it. Yep. All right. Um, Okay, Madeline asked about the USB cameras and microphones. Uh, the USB camera we mentioned was the Logitech uh, microphones. I know a lot of people talk about the um, the Snowballs. Uh, Lenny, do you have any preference? I, I, th well, I can't remember the name of them. But they're those big, round, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of them. Oh, for a microphone? Yes. Uh, for like you? the Blue Yeti or anything There you like go. That? Yeah, the Blue Yeti. You know, uh, yeah. So... <laughs> I think that those are those are quite good. How much are those? Do you know? They go for around a hundred to two hundred, depending upon what kind you get. And and actually, I've used the, the microphone on my uh, on my Logitech most of the time. 
like if I'm just doing something and I don't have a headset on, and, and that's that sounds pretty good for the most part. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm actually not allowed to buy myself any more gear. <laughs> And to Jenny's point, you don't really just don't go crazy on your microphone. I think that uh, I'll, I'll put a link. I'll put some uh, hit me up, and and I I'll put some options together. You can get a decent enough microphone that isn't necessarily USB, but it's a mini uh, for thirty bucks. There you go. The one Jenny has is that's a that's a mini one, isn't it, Jenny? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The USB ones are cool. Uh, well, so but, but then you're stuck with USB, right? If you have one that's mini, then you could hook it up to a camera. So it's a little bit more, more versatile. Um, I don't think I'd shell out 200 bucks for a uh, USB microphone, though. No. It's, it's only going to be marginally better. I've heard people do sound tests using like a cheap and a middle and then like the top of the line. And honestly, for just something like we're doing here, I don't really see the reason to spend the extra money. I mean, it would be great, I guess, if you want this full resonant sound because you have Yo-Yo Ma in the studio with you. You know what yeah. I mean? But just for this, I don't really see the reason for it. Yeah, I, you, you, yeah, 30 bucks. I, I think below 30 bucks, then you're just taking chances, and that might be okay. Um, but I, 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 but I bought two of them. So. Is that what you paid? Yeah. I think I told you, I told you which one to get, and they sound uh -huh. great. Yeah, I mean, 17 bucks, and I bought an extra one, so in case this one, like, gets eaten by a cat or something, I've got a backup, so. There you go. Eaten by a cat. And, you know, I, I, have a per I personally like to outgrow gear, whether it be a bike or snowboard or microphone or camera. Uh, so, you know, 17 bucks, it's not going to break the bank. Hmm. All right. Well, very good. Uh, thank you so much for everything. Uh, we're, I guess we're going to wrap it up. We don't have any other questions out there, and... Um, this is uh, Chef Dennis with the community of uh, community series on edu community education series. There you go. I'll get it out sometime today. Uh, community education series, and my guest tonight was uh, Lenny Ferreira, and he helped us uh, learn how to do video productions. And uh, Jenny Feel, and she showed us from her kitchen how she did them. So um, thank you very much for coming, and we're back on schedule now. We'll have another event next Tuesday. So I hope to see you then.